Hero Society is currently done. The people are even attacking random innocent bystanders because they've been driven to madness by the villains. But it seems like the people respond to Deku differently. I'm not sure if at this time it's because Deku's being known, but for whatever reason, they listen to Deku a lot more than they listen to Grand. And it might be because when the citizens ask him questions like in reference to things going back to normal like this episode she asks will things ever go back to being the same Deku replies with something like I will make it go back meaning that Deku is taking being the new symbol of hope very serious however for the time being this is not the case the fifth user of the all for one power Daigoro Banjo said that the devastation quote that the devastation is like we've gone back in time trying not to catch the eyes of the villains just hiding every day in the quote so we get another depiction of what the my hero academia world is like after the awakening of the Shigaraki event Banjo then said that they are doing whatever they want Except to a certain degree that's not true because right now they're clearly hiding as evidenced by Hawk's best genus and Endeavor's conversation. Also, you have to remember that in the last episode, Deku said that Shigaraki can find him when he wants to. And that's also the reason Deku left UA in the first place. So the villains are clearly hiding probably to recuperate their strength and either go on an all-out onslaught against Deku all at once or attack UA again. Although if they attack UA, they might run into some problems. Meanwhile, in the world of quirk consciousness, learned that the other previous users released their power to aid Deku and using the power of the one for all. We also learned that the two previous users facing the wall quote lived during the cruelest time period during the height of all for one's physical prowess when he single-mindedly spread his control. Those under his control were unaware that they were being controlled. And a quote, and that sounds like a dangerous situation to be in if you're a hero. We also found out that the redhead facing the wall was a leader during that time who helped save the first user of the one for all power, who led a group to fight all for one with many dying and they both seem to be guilty about this. They also seem not to be in favor of the idea of trusting Deku, especially since from their point of view, Deku wants to save their arch enemy. They even called it a crazy illusion. All that being said, I really want to know more about the previous users. I personally would not mind a couple of episodes or even a season or two dedicated to them. And that might be extreme given budgets and time allowances and the health of these anime uh, creators. But these developed characters and personalities could use a bit of more time on screen. The good news is that the users that were facing the wall joined Midoriya during this episode. I thought it would take something much more epic. We'd be given more of a backstory, which we kind of got a mini version of that. Next, let's talk about Hired Gun, the fallen hero who treacherously killed another hero. Hawks told Deku that if he ran into her, he should run. Her quirks, as we learn, consist of her using her hair and turning it into bullets, but not just bullets, but they can be turned into any shape, like hollow points, for example, and that the uh, sister sky walks like Sanji. Otherwise, I'm not sure why Hawks told him to run, unless she has some other quirks, or she can use the quirks that she has in a way that enables her to capture Deku. We also observed during this episode that she was dragging around that worthless garbage overhaul who tortured that little girl as if anybody's going to feel bad for him because his mind is broken and he keeps saying pops. He's worthless. Deku was thinking of doing the opposite of what Hawks said to do regarding Hire Gun. So he's heading toward her. We also learned that All For One talked with her during the jailbreak from Tartarus and either put her under his control because he has the power to do that without people knowing as evidenced by the description given by the uh, one for all previous users who were facing the wall. 
whatever the case, All for One did something to her or gave her something. All for One also foresaw Deku leaving UA and even had the nerve to say, after calling Deku worthless in the world of court consciousness, that if he is around, the fall of Hero Society will never come. Well, I guess that would mean that All for One doesn't think Deku is as useless and worthless as he said he was during that conversation. It even seems like All for One believes in Deku more than Hero Society does when it comes to stopping villains. That's very interesting, but it makes sense that All For One would think that way. Deku is the ninth generation of All For One power users, so that would mean All For One has had eight generations of experience when it comes to dealing with symbols of hope, and he knows better than most how much power and influence he can have over people including creating new heroes by inspiring them and making people feel more protected all of which works against the villains destroying hero society i feel like there's a lot more to all for one than what we're seeing you remember in that car conversation between the three heroes it was suggested that all for one is always laughing and most of the time he is because he might be heartless maybe literally he did tell Deku in the world of quirks that sometimes he feels guilty like he's some normal type of person suggesting that all for one doesn't see himself as a normal person as far as emotions go I love all the characters they give them so much depth the author does such a good job it's hard not to be attached to them or not be intimately aware of them that's all for this week 255 out one piece